Hey everyone, welcome to Deep Dive Stocks. My name is Justin, and today we're going to do a data dive and we're going to be looking at Chewy. Let's get started. So Chewy has been on a pretty consistent decline in price recently, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be stopping anytime soon. Uh, so let's take a look at Voex. If you haven't, I definitely recommend checking out my video on Voex on my channel. It goes over what it measures, what it indicates, but the gist of it is when Voex is outside of these two horizontal lines, that means the stock is unstable. And we're going to see with Chewy that the, this un instability is pretty pronounced. So this is the Vox graph from today, March 31st. But if we go back all the way until the beginning of 2021, there's some cool things about Vox that we should notice. The first is that in January, February, and March of last year, uh, Chewy was going up pretty steadily. But with that, Vox was pretty nicely inside of stability itself. This is a good indication that those price rises were being well tolerated. The market was okay with them. Uh, liquidity and hedging, everything was going with the flow. But something in March of 2021 changed that almost exactly one year ago. Since then, it seems like Vorex is telling us that every time the price went down, well, so every time the price went down, Vorex dipped into the propagation zone which is giving us an indication that something, some of the price directing forces on the stock wanted the stock, I wanted with, with some air quotes, the stock to go down. And this is evidenced also with the, this price appreciation that happened in June of 2021 was met with these pretty drastic Vorex spikes. So not only did Vorex right here, the Vorex trend line, the tan line, go into the inhibition zone, which is above anything above that top horizontal line is the inhibition zone. And this indicates that the stock price, this, this uh, price appreciation was not being well tolerated. And in fact, we can look at the difference in Vorex between, again, in the start of 2021, where the price was going up pretty significantly, but Vorex was hanging out inside of stability versus in the second half of the year where Chewy was going up and not even as significantly as it was in the earlier part of the year. But Vorex, not only was it in the in the inhibition zone, but it was behaving wildly. I mean, those Vorex spikes are pretty significant. Um, you know, and if we take a peek ahead over here, we can see what Vorex, the daily Vorex, or the magenta is kind of supposed to look like, and then contrast that with what was happening in the middle of 2021. Pretty significant. Then in September of 2021, Vorex fell into the propagation zone, and that's really when things kind of just started going downhill for Chewy. The, when Vorex, so anything below this bottom horizontal line is the propagation zone. And it seems like when, typically when a stock, when a stock's Vorex falls into the propagation line or into the propagation zone, whatever price action prompted that Vorex behavior is what gets pushed along. So here it's not surprising that it seemed like a downward trend was uh, the most uh, reasonable outcome. Even with the little bump up in price in the end of 20, uh, 2021, Vorex, these Vorex spikes heading from the propagation zone into the inhibition zone is a pretty clear indication that even that little rise in price was not being well tolerated. And it only took a month for Vorex to fall back into the propagation zone where it has mostly stayed outside of some uh, once off Vorex daily spikes and also since then, the price has pretty consistently declined. So it seems like since at least the middle of 2021, Chewy hasn't really been able to rise in price without some significant resistance. And we're seeing that in Vorex. We're seeing it both in like the, like how quickly Vorex is uh, inclined to fall into the propagation zone anytime Chewy goes down. And also, how inclined Vorex is to react quite violently anytime Chewy experiences like more than one day of price appreciation. So then we arrive at the present and we see that Chewy, again, its Vorex is dipping pretty significantly down into the propagation zone. I mean, the this is a Vorex daily spike downwards. Even though Vorex trend is only just in the propagation zone, 
given the overall trend and the overall overall way that Varix is behaving on Chewy, it Varix is telling us that persistent and consistent declines in price are probably the most likely outcome. So that's Varix. If we move on to the snap graphs, so the snap graphs take Varix and quantify it or um, on like a stock by stock basis. And there's four of them. We have the 20 days, so that's one month, the 10 trading days, the five trading days, and then tomorrow, the one trading day. And, all, and for the snap graphs, what we do is we look to see where the crosshairs are. So on the 20 trading day, this Vorex behavior is consistent with negative returns because the crosshair is below the gold line. And the same on the 10 day, the same on the five day, and the same on the one day. So on all four snap graphs, we have negative returns indicated uh, for Chewy based off of the most recent Vorex behavior. And just real quick with the snap graphs, the highlighted region here, those are the 95% confident confidence intervals for the trend. And we see that for the ma all, yeah, majority, all of them, except for the one month, the crosshairs or the prediction is within the 95% confidence intervals. So we can be pretty certain that the snap graphs are performing quite well here with Chewy. So we have negative returns indicated on all four. If we move down to the, to the expected price range graph, Something that's interesting about Chewy is we, we, you'll notice that Chewy, so real quick, so this is the expected price range graph. The dotted lines are the 68% probable like price cone or price limits that the market gives to Chewy. And so when, for instance, in January, when Chewy fell below, consistently below those dashed lines, that's telling us that Chewy was being pushed down even more than the um, the stock market uh, anticipated. And we see what's unique about Chewy is that's a pretty persistent um, uh, activity or phenomenon. The most stocks, even when they're having like a, a, a steady decline in price, are typically well housed inside of these expected price range bands, but that's not the same for Chewy. And that might come into play when we start trying to position ourselves um, either long or short on Chewy, knowing that Chewy typically outperforms the market's expectations on price depreciations um, and I guess occasionally when the price is going up will be good to know that that information helps us position ourselves um, especially with options the volatility here we see that uh, just kind of been going up right for the past three months at least recently in the middle of March it seems like uh, liquidity has kind of returned back to the stock volatility dropped a little bit but the overall, overall though, the uh, the behavior of volatility is relatively steady on Chewy, so we don't see volatility like spiking up and down and going all over the place. It's just kind of slowly been rising. So then we can move on to the shorting graph. Shorting graph just like, tells us the amount of shorting volume to lit market volume, and on Chewy, not that interesting. We've had a pretty long-term increase recently since July of 2021, but nothing crazy stands out for the shorting. Moving on to the options graph, so there's two of them. The one on the left, this gives us the current options layout and how things are looking today. And then on the right, we have the, the change in the options graphs. So this gives us the change in the options uh, from the day prior. That's what these lines are. So blue means the option is increased. Gold means the options of that strike have decreased. And these lines here show us the average daily change for the past month. And so what's interesting is it looks like right off the bat, we noticed that on average for the past month, around $60 calls have been being opened. Uh, so it'll be interesting to know if those calls were dealer short, were they dealer long? So were people expecting the price to go up? Were they expecting the price to go down? And then conversely, on the put side, we see that for the past month, a good amount of puts have been being opened, uh, but it seems like uh, to an average of 200% actually uh, per day for the past month, puts out of the money have been opened up uh, right about at $30. So now we know that the market is positioning for downside via the puts. Those are usually always dealer short, um, barring some, some uh, exceptions. And then the one thing we 
can try, but they're kind of out of the money now, so it might be a little difficult, but we can see if we can uh, figure out if they're out of the money calls that were up here in the $60 range were dealer short or dealer long as well. And then to help us do that, we can move down to the tables, and, and most notably, we can look at the delta tables. And so with such with negative values, so the current delta for Chewy is negative 95,000, we can say that Chewy is in a gamma squeeze. And so that's not, it's honestly kind of surprising given the amount of puts that are opened up. Um, if those were dealer long puts or dealer short puts, right? So if retail investors were purchasing puts, then I would expect that to load long delta onto the onto Chewy, but it seems like we actually have quite a significant amount of short delta because we're negative. So interesting, all right. But Chewy is in a gamma squeeze, but perhaps at least, definitely at least for the past month too on average. So perhaps that explains why the price has been moving outside of those expected price range bands more than usual. Uh, in terms of the gamma squeeze also on its effect on price, we see today, if we look at the value for that expected price range, it was 3.26%. So that means the market would have been okay with a positive 3.26% day or a negative 3.26% day. But today we had a negative 4.7%. So again, we moved outside of that expected price range band. And so tomorrow with an expected price range of 3.30%, it might be reasonable to expect a greater move than that. And so, and if we want, we can look down here into the options directions. What's interesting about Chewy is that it does have a good amount of dealer out of the money puts that are dealer long. So that means people have sold these puts. Um, those can provoke a good amount of instability if the price continues to go down and then those puts become in the money or if volatility rises. Um, volatility didn't rise too much today, just 1.29%. Not that much shorting going on either. A days to cover amount on Chewy of three. That's not terrible. The hedging matrix, we can see the gamma squeeze in action. So we can see that as the price decrease, regardless of what volatility does, shares have to be sold in order to hedge the, all those options. And as the price increases, uh, so every for every point increase in the spot and the volatility, 94,197 shares have to be purchased on Chewy. Um, and that's the effect of the gamma squeeze, where the hedging has to go in the same direction as the as the spot price. And yeah, so I think overall, it looks like Chewy is still headed towards its continued downward decline, right? So we, you know, we have the contextualization of Vorex is telling us that anytime the price goes up, uh, Vorex is not happy with it. It gets pretty unstable, and the price falls and look at how quickly Vorex falls into the propagation zone on even like two days worth of of price action or like negative price action right like Vorex just dives into the propagation zone and with a pretty healthy Vorex dip recently it's not too surprising that all four snap graphs are indicating negative returns and if I was to venture to say I would say that this has a lot to do with the kind of persistent gamma squeeze that it's had for like the past month so yeah, that's Chewy. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the data dive. If you haven't, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Happy trading. Bye.